that gospel uh, we heard a little earlier in the week, and Father Gilson did a wonderful job of explaining the, the uh, parable of the sower and the seeds as Jesus explains it today. All I would like to say about that is, is uh, I won't spend much time on it today. Just want to mention that uh, there's no better soil in which the Word of God can land uh, and n no more fruit can be produced than in a, a, a family that is filled with the love and joy and faith that, uh, that we hope all of us can benefit from. Uh, uh, that, that kind of family. So I'd like to say a word just about my own grandparents. It's Grandparents Day. Um, by the way, uh, Susan Wallace is a grandparent. <laughs> She's, she was w roaming around the office this morning with her little grandchild, Chase, a healthy, beautiful little baby that she's been waiting for for a while. <laughs> so congratulations on that. Um, and so I'd like to say a word about my own grandparents. And then this symposium we were we had at the University of Notre Dame this weekend, which was really uh, remarkable in many ways. So uh, everybody loved my grandfather, uh, especially the grandchildren. He was friendly and joyful and he had a great sense of humor. He was benevolent and uh, a gentleman respected by all. My grandmother, on the other hand, liked to dress in black. She was only about this big. She was stern, strong-willed, the enforcer. They raised 12 children. Uh, and they helped raise nine of their grandchildren because their youngest son, Eddie, uh, lived with them. And, uh, and my uncle Eddie revealed to me the secret of my grandparents. He said, um, you know, everybody loved uh, our grandfather. And he said, he was the one who loaded the bullets. And the stern grandmother was the one that fired the bullets. <laughs> So their, their house was well-ordered and joyful and faithful. And I'm so uh, privileged to have, uh, be a descendant of, of them. Not perfect in any way. I wish I were like them. They prayed the rosary every evening after supper. They loved little brother Andre and they supported his cause. My, mother was a, my grandmother was a neighborhood organizer for him. And they had clear rules and expectations and she taught catechism to the children in the neighborhood along with her 12 children. So I loved and respected my grandparents as did all of their children and their grandchildren and their whole numerous circle of friends. Today the church speaks to us of Jesus's grandparents. The Bible does not say anything about them. So how do we know about the parents of Mary? We get it their names, Joachim and Anne, from the apocryphal Gospel of James, which was written about a hundred years after the death and resurrection of Jesus, so not by an eyewitness and not part of the canon of Scripture. Uh, when Mary was born uh, to her parents, they were in old age, and so she was a special gift from God. And according to the, the, this, uh, this uh, apocryphal Gospel of James, at the age of three, they brought her to the temple and entrusted her to the faithful widows in the temple who, who took custody of her and uh, assisted the priests in the temple in the worship. They taught Mary the prayers, the psalms, the hymns, the services of the temple until she became a teenager, at which time she was returned to her parents. And according to the, this uh, Gospel of James, it's really interesting to read it. Uh, when it was time for her to be betrothed. Uh, Joseph and other young men were uh, lined up and they didn't know which one was the one that God intended for her. For <laughs> her. So uh, they each had a, a staff and, and Joseph's um, suddenly grew a lily. <laughs> so and, uh, so uh, Anne and Joachim knew that he was the one that God intended. That's why Joseph's always depicted with a, with a lily. Uh, so after a full life, they were called home to the father's house. But they filled Mary with humility, with love for God's word, and spirit of loving service. So last week, Father Pinto and I participated in an important symposium on family life and spirituality at the University of Notre Dame. 
And we listened to a number of powerful presentations. It really is amazing. And one of them by Dr. Joseph White was on the way God teaches. And, and he's a, uh, an expert in child psychology and in catechesis in passing on the faith. And he claims that God reveals himself to us according to his own pedagogy uh, in this way. First, by invitation and a personal relationship. Think of Adam and Eve and Noah and Abraham and Sarah and Moses and Jesus saying, come follow me. So by invitation. Second, by incarnation, God comes among us as one of us fully by incarnation. And then familial, his family home, according to Father Peyton, was a cradle, a school, a university, a library, and most of all, a little church where he says, I learned all the essentials of life that make me who I am. And fourth, God reveals himself in a structured, systematic, and comprehensive way. God has a definite plan for each one of us that leads us, if we follow it according to his plan, leads us to eternal life with him in heaven. And finally, his, his uh, pedagogy, his way of teaching us is perpetual. It has eternal significance, everything we do. So today, I'd like to thank God for the blessing of all of our grandparents and to pray for them and, and uh, pray that uh, those of us uh, who are not yet grandparents or spiritual grandparents, that uh, we will uh, be uh, good grandparents and we will also uh, take this as a, a way that passing on the faith as grandparents is so effective, some, in some cases, many cases more effective than, than parents themselves trying to pass on the faith. So God bless our grandparents and all of our families.